Great Joy, that's the title of this new, new Devo. Even though we'll be finished before Christmas, we're heading into that season, and I wanna talk about Great Joy. If you know in the Bible story about Jesus' birth, the angels say, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. You know that proclamation. Little kids say it when they stand up in Christmas programs, dressed as little angels, talking to the shepherds nearby. And the part that stands out to me is great joy to all people. And how is that attainable and what is it? And is joy really different from happiness like people say or are we just mincing words? My gosh, if that's what Jesus was bringing to the world when he came to the earth, I want it, don't you? So here we go. This Devo today is called Shouts of Joy. I love that one of the first mentions of joy in the Bible is shouting for joy. So when's the last time you actually shouted for joy? I've tried to think of those times in my own life, maybe where a team wins a game and we all shout for joy, especially when the little kids are playing. Our family has been ringing a tambourine for answered prayers, a type of shouting for joy. And I'm sure people shout for joy at the birth of a child, at weddings, and for all sorts of victories. But the first mention of shouting for joy is found in Leviticus, and it's for none of those things. Chapter 9 is this long discourse about a sacrifice to be made to God for the promise is that the Lord will appear to you after all these certain steps are taken. And the first step is to make a sin offering. That was a ritual back then. It's now just a prayer and asking for repentance thanks to Jesus. But these folks had to obey all the ins and outs of preparing their offerings. Fingers and blood and fat and kidneys are mentioned. Piece by piece, they burn their offerings on the altar, first for the leaders and then for the people. And there was a grain offering to burn in addition to the others. Lots of descriptions of blood, the fat, the kidneys and the livers. I'm not sure I could have watched it all, but it was necessary back then, and according to Moses' commands, they then waved the breast and the thighs as a wave offering. The people were blessed, all the offerings were made, and just like promised, the Lord, the promise, the glory of the Lord appeared to everyone. It says that a fire came and consumed the offerings, and when the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell down. I can honestly say I've never been a part of something like that, but in Ezra 3 we read another long story about sacrifices and offerings and building foundations, and at the end it says the people shouted for joy because the foundation of the Lord had been laid, and some wept and shouted for joy and says that it was so noisy that it could be heard far away. The Psalms are full of shouts of joy for victory, for God's protection being accompanied by praise and lifting up God's name. God's name. Meadows and flocks and valleys, valleys are credited as shouting with joy. Can you visualize it? Maybe it's like the fall season when we visit the Northeast or a park where leaves are emerging in stunning color. They start to fall and animals run around as they're preparing for a new season. It's amazing. We're told to shout for joy with instruments because of the rock of our salvation. We're to remember God's acts, to observe his creation and his majesty. The heavens rejoice, the mountains sing, and all of that is in the Old Testament. So when we move to the New Testament, there's only one mention of shouting for joy, and it's Galatians 4, and it starts by saying, we are no longer slaves, but God's children. No more burning offerings on the altar. The writer was talking to a group of people and asking them if they wanted to be under the law again. Seriously, make all those atonements for sins and go back to the, all the pieces and the parts? It is mentioned that we are all children of the promise like Abraham's promised children long ago and that we're no longer under the law. Do you see this full circle? God promised to appear to his people as they labored to offer sacrifices and set up everything perfectly on an altar. He appeared to them and they shouted for joy. And now that Jesus has come, he was the sacrifice and we're never to forget how free we are because of that. Grace has been poured out on all of us and we're free, a cause to shout for joy. So let's end this first Devo by asking ourselves to observe and, observe and think again what causes us to shout for joy. Is it the realization of the freedom we have in Christ? We're no longer bound to rituals and sin offerings, but we're free. We're free like God's creation to respond to Him in waving, praising, skipping, and rising because we belong to Him. We're securely held in His hands. 
What if you inherited a billion dollars overnight? Would you and yours shout for joy? You bet you would. Well, we've become heirs to the one and only God that sent his son to save us from our sins, to offer us freedom forever to live. Shouts of joy erupting so noisily over the amazing love of God as he appears when we believe.